good morning. And welcome to worship here at the First Presbyterian Church of Woodbridge. We are so glad to have you today as we celebrate our in as much service with our Christmas pageant. And after worship, everyone is invited next door to Fellowship Hall for a time of carols, crafting cocoa and cookies. So please come. There are, I do have, um, I do want to call your attention to the announcements that are in the bulletin, especially the order form for the sanctuary flowers for Christmas. Um, we've got the Christmas Eve schedule as well. It is 5.30 and 10 p.m. And Sunday, December 26th is wear your Christmas sweater or your new clothes or whatever you are wearing and come and join us. Um, you may want to want to come to see what Christmas sweater the pastor has on. That's all I'm saying. Um, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. will no, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., the worship committee is meeting, and I'm looking for Michael, and I can't see him. He's at the door. Um, I don't know if it's online or in person. I think it's online, but I will have Michael send out an email for worship. Also, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m., at the manse is PW. So um, if you haven't signed up, there is t still time and, and, and plenty of, of room and just bring us something. We are doing a, a real potluck. The worst thing that can happen is we end up eating salad and brownies. That's not a problem in my mind. Are there any other announcements that need to come before us at this time? Online. Okay, worship is online. Thank you, Marilyn. Seeing no other announcements, let us begin our worship with our prelude. Thank you. 
I invite those who are able to rise and join in the singing of our Advent hymn, number 88, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 5 and 6 only. Let us pray. Holy God, we have come to this place from a world of demands and schedules. We have sought hope and peace and found them here. Now we seek the inner joy that only your presence can bring to our lives. Open our hearts and our spirits to your love, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I invite you to join with me in our first Christmas carol of the season, number 132, Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
in this season of Advent and preparation. We try so hard to be cheery and merry and bright. And sometimes our crabby sides come out. Together, let us pray our prayer of confession. It is getting more and more difficult, compassionate God, for us to keep our attention on the holy things. Our lives are caught up in the planning, parties, gifts, and other such things. We get sidetracked too easily and exhausted. We fall into restless sleep. The cries of those in need abound, and we are overwhelmed by the need. Too often we turn a deaf ear because we feel we just can't meet all the needs that are presented to us. Heal our hearts and spirits, God of our salvation. Help us understand that you do not ask us to heal everything, but rather to find a simple way in which we might lighten someone else's burden as you have lightened our lives. You have brought hope and peace to us. Now cause us to rejoice in the wondrous things that you have done. Teach us to use our gifts for the common good, in that in helping we find great and abundant joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, the messenger has been sent to you, proclaiming that there is one who is coming, who will heal, forgive, and lead you. Know that this is a great gift from God, who has always and will always love you. Thanks be to God. be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, may we hear the old, old story in new ways, and may it speak to our hearts and lead us to live in your joy. Amen. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. But you, O Bethlehem Ephratah, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. For unto us, for unto us, a, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and he will name, and his name will be Wonderful Chancellor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, 
Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and hold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment, where Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was the, of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, he betrothed who was with the child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in the manger, because there was no place for him in the inn. Please join us in singing hymn 115, Away in the Manger. And in that region there were shepherds out in, in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news, a great joy, which will come to all, all the people. For, for to you is born the day of the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger, and suddenly there will, was 
with the angel, with a multitude of the heavenly host, praising to God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and earth peace among men whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord made us has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the, in the land of Ju Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. F for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and, and ascertained from them what time the star appeared and sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till they came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Please join us in singing hymn 102, Savior of the Nations, come.
thank you. You may, you may be seated and thank you, Sunday School and our, and our readers. Thank you so much. I need to confess, this is one of my favorite Sundays of the entire year. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. As the wise men brought their gifts to Jesus, so he taught us to bring our gifts and to help others. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all nations, and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep at his right hand, but the goats at the left. Then the, then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, O blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see the hungry and feed thee, or thirsty and give thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger and welcome thee, or naked and clothe thee? And when did we see thee sick or in prison and visit thee? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Please bring your gifts forward and place them under the Christmas tree. We do invite any of you who have brought things for inasmuch to, to put them under the Christmas tree at this time. Okay, so now I'm going to say that this is my favorite Sunday because I love when our children give us the gift of sharing the Christmas story with us. And I've had the unique pleasure to bump up and meet up with some of the young adults I served when they were little kids. And they come running up to me and they say, Pastor Marie, I remember every single per person I was in the Christmas story. You laugh, but there is something about acting out the story that makes it real for these kids that they carry into their adult lives. And I love to, to think of it as the work of God reminding all of us, no matter what happens in our lives, there is new hope right around the corner. And we see it in our children. And I think it's also poignant that we pair the Christmas pageant with giving to others. You are the first church that I have ever heard of having an in as much Sunday, and I think I'm going to steal it and bring it to others, because I love this image. 
especially this weekend, as we woke up yesterday to horrendous news of the destruction of so many towns and lives and places of work and houses of worship. I know your heart broke with my heart as we heard all of it. I know you were probably texting like I was texting friends in the Midwest to make sure they were okay. It's, it's because of events of Friday night why our gifts are needed so much. Yes, yes I know, these gifts aren't going there, but these gifts are going to other places of need. This year we are giving all of this food and toys and everything we collect to the joint bases of McGuire, Dix, and Leah Curse. Thank you. I, I knew when I was starting to mention it, I was going to not remember two names. It's kind of like when I try to name the dwarves. Um, the need is so great. Everywhere we look this year, we see people in need, scrambling to make ends meet. And it's true, we can't solve all the problems of the world. None of us can. But we can do our part. And this is how we do it. And we do it because we celebrate the birth of the one who is to come into the world to be our light and our salvation. Our children tell us the old, old story in brand new ways each and every year. May that newness and rebirth carry us for one more year so that we can reach out and give however we can to those in need. Thank you. Amen. I invite all who are able to rise and join me in the affirmation of faith as together we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We have now come to the time in our service where I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, your reasons to give thanks. Well, we do start with the tornado or tornadoes. Um, it's heartbreaking. Um, I have one friend in Iowa who's desperately trying to um, contact his extended family in Kentucky. I have another friend in Kentucky who's the pastor of the church in Berea. They are fine, but they are starting to mobilize for how they can help those to the West. Um, we've all seen the scenes from Mayfield. Um, 
the um, Presbyterian Disaster Relief is already on its way, and if you would like to make a donation, you, you can do that um, through us, through them, and it, it will get to those who need it. Um, and we keep our hearts open and our prayers going. We also continue to keep the families of James Klausman and Jason Parlikoski in our thoughts and our prayers. Um, also, Lee Novotny has asked for prayers for her friend Dawn, who is on life support. Are there others? Colleen. Yes, Colleen asks for continued prayers for her Uncle Bill, who they have figured out it is a very rare in infection and are starting to treat it, and hopefully he will be released this week. And? Happy birthday, Tyler. It's 19, right? Yes. He's still young enough that we can share how old he is. So, Tyler, may you have a blessed birthday. And don't kill your mother for un announcing it. Yes. Are there any others? And with all that is on our hearts and our minds, let us turn to God in prayer. First, with the silent prayers of our hearts, let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for days like this when we can celebrate your newness and your joy through the laughter of our children. Remind us to look at life with a child's curiosity and a childlike open heart. Because, holy God, there are so many things that happen in life that can steal that curiosity, that wonder, and that joy away. May we continue to lead lives that share, share your love, share what we have, Share your hope to a world that feels like things just keep happening again and again and again. Holy God, be with us. Holy God, break into our hearts and allow your candlelight to shine through. May that light get stronger and stronger in us so that when we arrive at Christmas, your light is shining so brightly that we cannot do anything but rejoice. For God, it gets hard. The lists that weigh us down, the list of people who we want to pray for, keeps getting longer and longer. And yet we know that you hold every single person who calls on your name close to your heart. And so with confidence this day, holy God, we pray for all those people who grieve and mourn. We ask 
that they know your peace. We pray, holy God, with all people who celebrate and rejoice on this day, knowing that those celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray for all those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence be with them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray, holy God, for all those people who wrestle with questions that loom so large and answers that feel so small. We ask that they know your hope. We pray, holy God, for all people who freely give of themselves in so many different ways so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and war and hatred and that your peace and justice and mercy come to all corners of our earth. Lead us and guide us, holy God, to be your faithful people here and now, shining your light of hope and peace and joy everywhere we go. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear friends, may we share our bounty so that God's hope, peace, and joy may be known in this world. You may leave your offering at, in the plate at the back of the sanctuary. You may mail it in or leave it in, in the mailbox, or you may donate online.
please join me in our prayer of dedication found in your bulletins. Generous God, the bounty of your love overflows into every aspect of our lives. May the gifts we bring before you this day be a sign of our commitment to share our love with those in need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join me in singing carol number 136, Go Tell It on the Mountain. <laughs> 